first of all, I want to thank you for the uh, ton of really nice comments <clears throat> on the last video. And I think we're up to about 60 likes, which is really good for these videos. Of course, they got to be over 100, but you're working it. Thank you. This video is on altitude, and I've been planning on updating this. The last time I did a video on altitude was almost two years ago. That video was called Learning to Live Without Breathing. And there's some truth to that. A quick history of my experience with altitude is, as you probably know if you watch these videos, when I came here three years ago, I was right out of the hospital and really sick. <clears throat> I spent a couple years in bed and um, I was very weak. And I flew into Quito. I was supposed to fly out the next day. I didn't fly for several days because I just couldn't make it back to the airport. I had a mixture of altitude sickness and the problem. So then I flew to Cuenca, and I couldn't walk more than 15 or 20 feet at that time. And the altitude was kicking my butt. I had the headaches. I couldn't breathe. And um, it was pretty severe because I had complications. But I drank a cup of cocoa tea, and I drank one more. And that part of it cleared up. So a couple days in Quito, two or three days in Cuenca, and about five days, that initial altitude thing cleared up. For the next year, I worked on getting healthy and walking. And then I moved to Hinon, which is a thousand feet lower. Now what I found in Hinon, being a thousand feet lower, is all of a sudden cooking seemed normal. You wouldn't think going from 82 or 8100 feet to 7100 feet would make that much difference, but it does. It's kind of an exponential effect with the pressure. Things cook normal. I could, I could uh, put bread in the oven. It would raise, you know, mostly normal. And I didn't really feel any altitude effects at all. I slept like a baby, which I hadn't uh, for the year before. So I noticed that there was a demonstrative difference. Then I moved back to Cuenca. That's when all hell broke loose. I got the flu. And the flu just went on and on and on. Lung congestion. I went to Colombia. Goes away. I come back. I got the flu. I actually, somewhere around last March, it turned into pneumonia. It was pretty serious. And the doctor said, get low. So I'm back to Columbia, and in two or three days, I'm back to normal. I got all this energy. So then I come back. And as you know, I just recently made another trip to Columbia. I made five or six over the last two years, but so I made another trip to Columbia. I got the flu there. And I don't know why, but I rushed to come back. I was just feeling so bad. There's no place like home, so I come back. And the lung thing kicked in. Thankfully, it didn't turn into pneumonia. <coughs> but as you know, I'm still struggling with it. So that brings us to the topic of altitude in general. So bear with me. Okay, first of all, according to what I've read, People are not affected very much between 5,000, which is Vilcabamba, and up to 8,000, which is Cuenca's a little bit over. After you get over 8,000, now this all is going to be generalized for the bulk of people. When you get over 8,000 feet, that's where issues start to kick in. Now first you have this short-term thing, which I mentioned to you. I was cured with a coca tea after four or five days. Most people come here, they're told to hydrate, drink lots of water, have some coca tea, you go to, go to the pharmacy and get some altitude pills, Dexy something or other, and those are effective. And for that initial thing, it works. And then you walk around, everything seems fine. 
during that short term thing you've got this shortness of breath or difficulty in breathing you get these headaches maybe nausea mostly you're really really tired it's because you're not getting as much oxygen so typically that's going to take a few days to maybe even a couple weeks and pretty much everybody gets over that and even a few people are never really affected much by it now i will interject here another myth bust moving to a higher altitude will cause me to lose weight it's actually there's no basis for that oh but there's basis i came and i lost weight i know lots of people yeah that's true but you move in particular cuenca or quito you've changed your lifestyle you're not jumping in a car to go everywhere even if you buy a car you're using a lot of public transportation your lifestyle has changed that's why you lose weight it's not really the altitude if you went to Vilcabamba you will lose weight probably now I have met a couple people over the course of a few years that actually gained weight <laughs> um, they changed their lifestyle in a different way so the altitude isn't the issue I could find nothing anywhere that says that except people that claim they came here and they lost weight which is true I mean I lost a ton of weight but I lost a ton of weight because I put on a ton of weight living in bed for two and a half years altitude also affects cooking things don't want to rise things don't cook the way you're used to it takes a long time to adjust to it some things that will never be the same as at lower altitude try to find a good croissant but now we're going to move into the long-term effects this won't hit everybody it won't hit most people but you may experience some symptoms music is the propane or natural gas truck they come around two or three times every morning in case you need one two dollars and fifty cents you exchange the tanks tanks cost you 50 55 dollars you don't really own it but you keep a tank always i keep two tanks one is a backup the altitude the first thing that seems to bother people is some sort of sleeping issues whether it's sleep apnea wake up a lot during the night or just can't seem to get good sleep or sleep a lot less than what they're used to this can be a problem it, it, it's somewhat of a problem for me but not enough to bother me I've always had sleep problems so I just ignore it another issue and these can turn it, these don't even have to be ongoing they can just start showing up after two years three years four years another issue is um, breathing catching your breath you do something maybe a short burst of energy and you're doesn't you can be in great shape and you can experience that sometimes your body never fully acclimates and so processing oxygen can be an issue and last um, in these symptoms headaches you may experience more headaches than you used to experience again a small portion of people experience these these symptoms later now we get to mine this is called HAPE high altitude pulmonary edema there's no specific known cause for this they just know through studies that it happens to a certain portion of people that go from low altitude living in high altitude we know what's going on with me I had pneumonia really really bad about 20 years ago I almost died from it. it took me six months to recover what happens is it scarred my lungs the doctor told me my lungs will never be the same and they're scarring and so be careful about getting pneumonia again because of the damage it can further scar so I caught it however this constant lung congestion since I moved back 
from you know been going back to the doctor very good doctor and with all these other symptoms it was kind of hard to figure it out but last time going to Columbia being cured in a couple days this time getting the flu in Columbia which means it wasn't the fake flu caused by high altitude uh, pulmonary edema it, you can get flu symptoms but I got the flu came here and it happened again so he is completely convinced and with all the reading I've done I'm also convinced that that's the issue compounded by the lung scarring that whenever I build up congestion like get a cold or flu I can't get rid of it high altitude pulmonary edema is actually quite dangerous it can ultimately affect your heart and you can just out and out die from it your lifespan is shortened if you have that you really need to get to a lower altitude now for me I could go to you know right I don't have any problems there it's a thousand feet lower all the difference in the world and I could come into Quanket like I did before and for a day two doesn't matter it won't affect me it only affects me here if I get the flu and build up the congestion so I could work around it. I could maybe even live in Paute or, uh, well, I would never live in Guadalajara, but there's other places that, you know, I could live to adjust. However, um, I equally love Colombia, and so I will be moving there, as I've announced before. And I will be going probably the first part of September. I will be coming back. I'm retaining my residency. As a matter of fact, I may very well turn it into citizenship. I found I'm eligible right now. So I, I don't know about that. But I do know that my plan of going there for a bunch of months and coming here for a bunch of months, this has altered that. I, can't, I really can't take that risk. Uh, and the difference of how good I felt when I was in Hidon versus how good I feel here which is seems like I'm always sick, right? Or when I go to Columbia after a day or two, I have all the energy in the world. I feel great. It's like I got a shot of adrenaline or something. In other words, I feel normal <laughs> at those altitudes. Now in, in um, Columbia, I'll go to places like Manizales, which is the altitude of Hiron. It has a climate similar to Cuenca, less rain, more sun, and it has altitude, but it doesn't go up over that threshold. And then I can go to Armenia, five, 6,000 feet, depending on where I am, <coughs> lower. There's a big range right there. Um, it's no different than Vilcabamba to Loja. So the places that I love there the altitude is not an issue the places I like in Ecuador are really narrowed to this Cuenca area so so that's my story that's a story of altitude to sum this up when you come here you will most likely feel some effects. They may be very minor. I know a lot of people say, oh, I didn't feel anything, yeah, except they don't hear them wheezing. You're probably going to hit, be hit, hit with some of these side effects. You drink some coca tea, or you just wait it out. You, you hydrate, you go to the pharmacy, you get an altitude pill. It's not like an ongoing thing. Like I said, I drank two cups of coca tea, one each morning for two days. And that was it. And the stuff is nasty, so you don't want to keep it up. But it worked. But then you can get some long-term things. You won't find these out on a two-week, three-month trip. You find out after a couple years, generally. And it can be just symptoms that you can just ignore and you can live with. Or it can turn into something more serious. Now... 
because I know a lot of people in Colombia and I've actually got almost another life there anyway. That's my choice. But if you come here, I don't want to freak you out. I don't want you to think, well, if I move to Cuenca, if this happens, my life's going to be a disaster. No, it, it doesn't have to be at all. If you like it here and you want to live here, don't be afraid of that because you have the option. You can go to a place like Paute or you can go to Hiron and you can come in every day if you want. I mean, the bus Paute is what, maybe half an hour? It, it doesn't have to alter your life if later you develop any of these symptoms. You can still enjoy Cuenca. You can come during the day. When you go back home and you sleep, it's enough that takes care of almost everyone. There will be a very small percentage of people that will have more traumatic effect and simply will have to stay away from anything over 8,000 feet for the rest of their life. I don't quite fall into that category, but I, you know, I think I've come kind of close. What a surprise to me. I used to fly. I used to fly high and uh, anything over 10,000 when I would flew in the military, anything over 10,000 requires oxygen. The private pilot, I mean, it's your discretion. Mo a good portion of my life, I was involved in flying. I never would have guessed that I would have altitude issues, but I never would have guessed I would have gotten pneumonia that scarred my lungs. So I'm not gonna say it's a one-off, but it is unusual. So that's the story of altitude. I hope this helps you out. You can still make your plans, even if you have the worst of fears, because you're gonna have alternatives. And remember that Cuenca lies around 81, 8,200 feet. And really, the big change is around 8,000 feet. So you're not that far away. I'll see you next time.